I'm Maddie. I'm Greg, and welcome to another Best Of video. A collection of your favourite moments from one week of our live family science show. Let's go live! This time, we are looking back. A long way back. Yeah. <laughs> Dino week. Four rawsome episodes where we excavated and explored our way through prehistoric times. Yeah, we put on our paleontologist hats to find out about fossils, discover more about the life of the dinos, and we asked questions like, what actually is a dinosaur and what on earth happened to them? You'll find that out at the end of this best of, but we're starting with fossils. After all, they are the reason why we know so much about dinosaurs. Mm, before we use a rather delicious demo to show you how fossils are made, we'd like to say a Jurassic thank you to Pearson, who are kindly sponsoring this best of video. Thank you very much, Pearson. We'll be back after this activity to introduce the next of your favourite dino moments. Now, I loved this one, mainly because it involved lots of biscuits. Mm. Also because fossils are amazing, but mostly biscuits. Enjoy. We need to answer the big question, the we big do. question of the day. What is a fossil? What is a fossil? In yeah. one line, fossils are uh, the stony remains of things that were once alive. That's cool. Right? Stony remains. But that's not good enough for us. We wanted to come up with a make. Uh, something that would be fun that you might want to try at home. So there are different types of fossils, right? Mm -hmm. Some fossils you can actually get of a bone or a whole skeleton. Awesome. Uh, you could sometimes get a trace fossil from a footstep or a yeah. footprint uh, or some leaves and a rock. Try to show you one of them at the end of the show. Uh, and sometimes you get a whole animal trapped, especially if it's a little animal, in some tree sap, which, which is, is also no, called amber. Yeah, you might have seen that in a film. Uh, or indeed in ice, especially uh, for the later kind of animals like woolly mammoths. Cool. But I've got a fun way to show you how a fossil forms. Okay, okay here right? we go. We're going to make ourselves a fossil, right? We're going to make it in this container here. Now, this is going to represent what's underneath our feet. So we're actually going to start by putting some, some bedrock. Oh, I should say I've made all this with... Um, with biscuits. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, pop some, some bedrock down in the bottom of that. Okay, so our, the bedrock is our Oreos. So that's bedrock the... formed billions of years ago, like close to when the earth formed, right? So that's what everything kind of builds up on. Okay. Now imagine that we jump forwards to 150 million years ago. And um, firstly, we would have had a bit more kind of rock on Ooh, top of the you. bedrock. So put in, a, put in a bit more rock in there. Okay, I'm going us. for some, some, some bourbons. There we go, I yeah, should say, good. our crunched up rock. That's enough. Lovely. Uh, a couple of layers of rock have kind of formed. Nice. Okay, grand. Now we're 150 million years. Okay, uh, we're, at the, we're in the late Jurassic right now. Mm -hmm. And what's happening? Well, Stegosaurus and Allosaurus are having a fight. Here you go, Maddie. Just here, are they? Yeah, show us in the camera. Okay. Oh, there you go. That's good. Yeah. So Stegosaurus and Allosaurus are having a fight, let's say, next to uh, a river, like a, a, a big ah. muddy river, and the Stegosaurus <laughs> dies. Oh, no. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, no. Do, 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 you can do, eat that do. one. <gasps> yeah. Top of the food chain. <laughs> Literally. Right. So the Stegosaurus has died. Mm. Now, not everything that dies turns into a fossil. Because quite often its body will be, uh, it will erode, it'll be eaten by little critters and it will just kind of decay away. Mm. This one's going to turn to a fossil because what quickly happens, right, to our stegosaurus next to this river is a whole load of mud, tasty, gets glooped, comes, comes down the river and goes on top of him. So let's chuck a bit of mud in there. I can see we, this is going to be a long episode today. There we go. All right, so some mud comes down and covers our stegosaurus. Lovely. Great. Thank you oh, so you much. keep that. So that kind of seals the Stegosaurus skeleton in place. Okay. Now we're going to fast forward. We're going to fast forward through lots and lots of years, not just tens or hundreds, thousands of years. And what's going to happen is more and more mud and other bits of rock are going to come down the river or they're going to actually get layered up on top of it during time. And that rock is going to slowly start to build up above our Stegosaurus. And... Actually, all this rock, all this sediment, all this mud and soil, maybe water, this sediment is heavy and it's going to push down on itself. And this is actually what forms rock. Oh. So rock is made from all this sediment becomes sedimentary rock. So all of this here becomes 
big heavy rock. Right. Okay. So what's happened to the skeleton of the Stegosaurus that died all those years ago? So first things, quite soon, uh, lots of the flesh just rotted away. And yeah, you were just left with that skeleton. Then what happens is the skeleton has been squashed by all that rock yeah. above it, the heavy rock, a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And that... Um, means that the bone that the skeleton's made of gets, it starts to kind of break down and then water, groundwater in the rock kind of trickles through the rock, trickles through the bone and it brings something called minerals into the skeleton. Okay. And those minerals start making crystals and it changes the skeleton, the bone of the skeleton into really hard rock. Okay. So a fossil, a fossil is not made of bone Okay. It's made of this really hard rock. It's been turned into rock under Got all this it. pressure. So that's because of the, the, the years and years of layers of rock and soil and mud that have built up on top of that that bone, that skeleton has pressurised it, the water's got in there and that's mineralised and now you've got hard exactly stone that. instead. Now imagine uh, 80 million years later or something, you've got a couple of uh, triceratops fighting uh, and... Uh, yeah, one of them dies, uh, and then <laughs> oh, that no. gets that gets covered in some mud as well. Oh, no, so we've got another river that's sort of around about in these times. Another casualty. poor little triceratops gets covered, and then there's another layer kind of goes on top of that. <laughs> more and more layers kind of go on top. All right, nice. And eventually you get so much rock built up that you essentially get to now. So let's put a bit of soil on top. Okay, right, here we go. A bit of soil. And then I've actually got some um, some grass. Let me show you that to the camera. I've just... Grass, look! Kind of green, spiky stuff. And there's our grass. Right. Wow. So what has happened... <laughs> Wowie. Is we now have fossilised skeletons of a stegosaurus and a triceratop and loads of rock on top of it. And then eventually in the future, maybe uh, there was a sea and the sea levels dropped or maybe the grounds eroded a bit and that skeleton uh, you eventually ends up at the top of the rock yeah. and maybe somebody finds it. So I could actually come along as a human and now... I've given you a better thing. spoon. Oh, have you? Yeah. Where's that? Oh, that's actually part of our excavation oh, dig okay, for fine, later fine, on. Fine. But a human could come along, find this patch of the earth and decide you know what i want to make a quarry so they could come along dig dig a huge quarry and that's when they might find the fossils that are buried beneath those layers all of those millions of years ago now we should say feel free to try that yourself um maybe don't make it that big because that's probably going to take us how long to eat we've got dessert for the next month guys i think (laughs) i think we must have spent about a week trying to eat all that at least a week but now we know how fossils are made we can show you how to make your own fossils at home so you can try your hand at being a paleontologist yeah here's how you could make your own crack open fossils and some ideas for how you can excavate and record your discoveries after how to make fossils first of all you want to get one cup of ground coffee that's used up coffee grounds then you want one cup of table salt one cup of flour and then finally one cup of sand i do have some alternative recipes for you in the description box below so give it a really good mix so that everything is mixed together and then you want to get about half a cup of water you might not need all of the water but mix it together until it's a sticky mixture so it holds itself together just like that as if you're making a sandcastle now get yourself some dinosaur toys maybe you've got some fossils but you could just use stones or shells or anything you've got at home stick one of those little toys into sort of a blob of the mixture and then make sure that the uh, the toy is completely covered and what you're doing is making yourself sort of little stones if you like so here's um another one this time i'm using an entire dinosaur toy i'm making sure that everything's covered and then i'm squeezing the mixture around it and here you go now what you want to do is put these uh these stones out in the sun or in a sunny spot and leave them to dry for about three days and that brings us to now so i'm actually going to play paleontologist here so i'm putting my uh, paleontologist hat on you look great i know i looked at paleontologists and genuinely they do always wear these hats it's not just like a cliche love that so so we are now going to here are the ones we made earlier yes we have got our fossil dig site. So what's happened is um, that wet mixture over the past three days has dried out. And now we have 
our own rock hard fossils that we can excavate and pretend that we are paleontologists. So what will happen? A paleontologist, they will use special tools. They might have a chisel, a hammer and even a paintbrush. And that will allow them to get into the rock to see what fossils they can find. So should we go for this one just here? Yeah, right in the middle? This is so much fun. Okay, so I'm going to try. Oh, here we go. Oh! Be very careful. Okay, get the nice. chisel and the hammer. Now, the good thing about these is that actually you should be able to crack them open yourself. So let's see what happens if I crack open this. <gasps> and yes. what do we have inside? Oh, can you see that? So it looks like we have found the jawbone, a fossilized um, jawbone of some creature from the past. Um, so now we can try excavate that a little bit more. We can try get it out. And um, obviously paleontologists would be extremely careful when doing this because they wouldn't want to break it. So they might get a little paintbrush just like that to get rid of any of the excess soil. They could even use a little bit of glue, something called resin, to keep that fossilised bone intact, to keep it together before they remove it from the earth. So I'm going to remove that now. <gasps> this is so said, much fun. Someone said it looked like pizza. Look, pizza? Oh, it does actually. That's, <laughs> a good, that's a good point. Loads of people loving your hat. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to brush all of that extra sand and soil off. And now what will happen, we have to transport that very carefully to a lab so we can study it. So I've got a little box here for my specimen, my fossil specimen, and I'm going to take the fossil that we've excavated and I'm going to wrap it carefully in a bandage. They actually, paleontologists will do this to protect it, to keep it together. And then it will go inside a box which uh, has some nice padding inside to keep it very safe because these things are delicate. They are millions and millions of years old. And then finally, we can label it. I don't have a pen. Do you have a pen? I've got a pen. There you go. There we go. It's one of my so face. We can, uh, Lots of different colours in one go. Perhaps you could, if you do this at home, perhaps you could measure it, see how long it is. So we can say that's about three centimetres and we can say it was found in the spare room. <laughs> Just like this. And now we have our own fossil specimen that we've popped in a box yeah i'm gonna have so much fun excavating all of these later genuinely she will so did you excavate all of the fossils i did crack open most of them but some of them have been put aside for a rainy day clever now once a paleontologist has discovered a fossil site one of their jobs is to put what remains of that prehistoric animal back together but looking at a jumble of fossilized bones is a bit like trying to put a jigsaw back together without a picture yeah how do you know what an animal looks like if it's never been seen. We decided to design our own dinos and I challenged Greg to some paleontologist problem solving. All right, so the first step of designing a dinosaur is to take your bones, your fossilized bones, and try to rearrange them into a skeleton. And that is going to be the base of our dino. So I'm going to set Greg a challenge. Yes. I have given him a sheet of paper and a collection of different bones. Now you'll find a link to these bones in the description uh, of this particular video. If you don't have a printer, you can always just take a look at that worksheet and maybe draw your own. But I'm going to give Greg 45 seconds on the clock to try and arrange the bones, ooh, ooh, arrange the bones in some sort of simple dinosaur shape. Do you reckon you can do that? I'm going to give it a go. Okay, all right then. So start the oh, clock. Hang on a sec. Three, two, one, go. And over to you. Okay, so here's the thing. Right now, Greg is moving, the, Greg's moving the bones around a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. But the truth is, paleontologists are really, really lucky if they find a complete skeleton with all the bones in the right place. It's much more likely that they'll just find a few bones that are pretty jumbled up. So you can think of it a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle where all of the pieces are jumbled up. Or you might even have several jigsaw puzzles with all the pieces jumbled up. And you've got to try and put them back in the right place. How are you doing? Seven seconds. <laughs> but you don't have the picture because here's the thing. No one has actually seen a dinosaur. Oh, Greg, time's up. Oh, can I just give it a little extra arm? Okay, quickly. Okay, quickly. all right. I'm going to give it an extra arm. So, because here's what I'm thinking. and That head doesn't fit. Hang on. All right. You're giving yourself bonus. <laughs> That was Bonus cheating. paper because I don't have sp don't have time. All right, so let me talk you through my idea. Um, basically, I've gone a little bit kind of T Rex with like the big leg at the back. It's just big. one leg, but you know you imagine, can imagine two. there, there right. two. So it stands um, mostly on its back legs. I didn't have a pelvis. Yeah, right. so that was a bit problematic. So I'm just going to do that. Um, do, do, do. Uh, head kind of goes on here. I want it to have some arms. So T-Rex had those tiny little arms at the front, but I want this one to have like more like a 
Paras, what is it? Parasolophus? Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus, which can, could, you know, go down on its front limbs. So okay. I wanted to be able to do that. So and you then can do both. Stick that on the end of the tail. Oh, I mean, you, you, this was not 45 it seconds. It was not 45 seconds, but that was quite a challenge. But here's the thing, it's something I want to show you. Is that actually, I did this same challenge earlier on this morning. We had exactly the same set of bones and we could pick and choose them. But look. Look how different mine ended up looking oh, to yours. On. I'm sticking mine down with the blue up. tag so I can pick it up. So actually, <laughs> oh, my, it's stuck I, to this extra I've bit gone of with a dinosaur that has sort of like four legs and you've gone. Oh, I've just lost some tail. That's okay. We can pick this up later. Fossils never complete, guys. <laughs> But it's pretty interesting how different they both look, don't you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. But that's the thing. We always, you know, when paleontologists are putting together fossils mm -hmm. um, into a complete skeleton or what they think the yeah. dinosaur looks like, it depends on what other dinosaurs they've seen before, mm. what fossils they've seen before. It always depends on your prior knowledge. Absolutely. And so our knowledge of dinosaurs is different and we've created very, very different looking dinosaurs. That was, that was harder. It was more <laughs> of a pressure than I thought it was going to be right now. It was really cool seeing how different our dinosaurs were. But what we loved even more was seeing all of yours. Yeah, everyone's designs were super unique, especially when you decorated them with skin and scales and feathers too. Yeah, now we've got a bit of fun for you. Uh, a dose of dino silliness. <laughs> we asked ourselves which dinosaur would be the best dino to take on a dinner date and to help us answer the question Terry the T-Rex and Deborah the Diplodocus came to help. What type of dinosaur do you think would make a good dinner date? What about a T-Rex? Hmm. Hi, I'm Terry the T-Rex and I like long walks by the river and uh, keeping my teeth sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm. T-Rex, not a good dino to uh, take on a date. No. Plus, plus T-Rex are carnivores. They might even try to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> what about a Diplodocus? Because I think they seem to be gentle giants, you know? Mm. Hi, I'm Deborah the Diplodocus. I like painting, reading, and eating lots and lots of salad. <laughs> Waiter. Waiter. Can I? Waiter. Excuse me. Service, please. Something. Excuse me, can I have the... Yeah, those long necks would make it far too easy for them to nick your greens. And what about those dangerous, massive tails? I'm sorry, it's just not going to work between us. Suit yourself! Okay. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think the T-Rex or, no. or Dippy is a particularly good dino dinner date, no, are they? I don't think so. After meeting both Terry and Deborah, we figured that we'd prefer to meet a more social dinosaur. Perhaps one less likely to eat you. Or stand on you. Yeah, one with better communication skills too. So we looked to a group of dinosaurs known as hadrosaurs, mm. more specifically the Parasaurolophus. No, you mean the Parasaurolophus. No, I mean the Parasauro... Anyway, <laughs> it's thought that they communicated with some really cool sounds, so I made a DIY instrument to help us explain. <clears throat> Here is the hadrosaur hat. Let's go back to the Parasaurolophus because they have something extra, a little something up their sleeve that lets them make another type of sound. And that's the part on their head. Now this is called, uh, we call it a crest, but you can think of this part just oh, here. Sorry, I that's can't. That's all right, that's okay. You can think of it like a hollow tube. Now that tube is kind of attached to its Hang nose. On, I want to try just something. Like Let's oh, try right, something. All right, here we go. Let me go this way. Oh, I think you, stand, you, you stand me sideways. Me that's it, right, okay. So that's it, come a bit close. That's it, stay still, stay still, I've got you. Hang on. Are you giving me... Oh, yes, Maddie, you look amazing. Okay, all right, so I'm going to stay here. So think of um, that crest, like a hollow tube. So when um, uh, a parasaurolophus would breathe in, the air would go up its nose, all the way up the crest, and loop back down again. And it's thought that when... Um, 
when a Parasaurolophus would breathe in quickly, it's possible that when the air travelled through the crest, can I move? Yeah, you can okay. move. <laughs> travelled through the crest in that way, it would have made a low tooting sound. Toot. Like a boo. To show you how this would have worked, I've actually gone and made myself a hadrosaur horn. A Parasaurolophus uh, Of course, hat, of you like. course you, you have. Like to see it? Reveal the hadrosaur horn. I think Andy's going to like Parasaurolophus this. Parasaurolophus trumpet. I'm move back oh a bit my here. goodness. Here we go. Oh so. my goodness. Hang on. Let's Andy's reaction. Let's just he's he's happy with that. <laughs> Thanks mate. He's happy with that. Okay, let's hear it. Come so on. Just like a Parasaurolophus, yes. if I um if I breathe in here, we can imagine it goes up through that nasal crest. It loops back round and then it comes out here and it would have made a low horn sound. Come on. Ready? Yes. So this is my Parasaurolophus. Ready? <laughs> 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 I've got too much lip balm on. Wait a second. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. And that sound is being created by that air. Oh, that was a good one. One more. Go on. So good. Cool, right? That's so good. So that's why we think a Parasaurolophus would make a good dinner date. Not only are they herbivores, they yes. graze on green. So they're not, not going to eat, eat us. You. Good. Um, but you can actually try and communicate with them as well because they were social animals. So here's the question. Have you got better at playing the hadrosaur hat? <sighs> nope. No, not at all. <laughs> One thing we did talk about in Dinosaur Week was the fact that not all ancient animals were dinosaurs. No, the awesome flying reptiles and sea monsters are not dinosaurs, but we couldn't just miss them out. Of course, so we came up with some quick makes to celebrate those incredible animals that once ruled the seas and the skies. This is our peg pterosaur and pebble plesiosaur. Back in our first episode of Dino Week, um, we said that for something to be a dinosaur, it needs to live on the land so huh? anything that flies in the air anything that swims in the sea therefore technically isn't a dinosaur no but we did think that uh, perhaps the flying reptiles and sea monsters that's what we're calling these groups actually deserve a bit of love from us we're going to start with the pterosaurs mm -hmm. so um prehistoric flying reptiles they're all called as a group they're called pterosaurs and within that big group there are lots of different species uh, i'm going to show you three of my faves all okay. right so one that you no doubt will have heard of is the pterodactylus or pterodactyl for short mm -hmm. here are a couple of them <sighs> And then you can actually go from the very small. So here is a very small one. This is a Nemecolopterus. Oh, it's tiny! Small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Oh, I wish I could have one as a pet. How amazing. You might not even, I might peck you a bit. Um, oh, I'll tame it. And then the biggest one you can yeah. get is this one. This is called a Quetzalcoatlus. Wow. Quetzalcoatlus, the largest known flying animal to have <gasps> ever lived. Wow. How super it is, cool is it, that? It was, it, imagine a Quetzalcoatlus, it had a wingspan of 10 metres, a 10 metre wingspan. So that's me lying down sort of head to feet five times, which is the size of a fighter jet. Wow. Enormous, absolutely enormous. So we're going to make ourselves a pterosaur. We're going to make mm -hmm. ourselves a peg pterosaur yeah this is a really really simple you. make uh, something that you can do at home and all you need for it is uh, a peg <laughs> and just some card yes. so actually we do have a camera here if you want yep. to make sure that's in focus on, yeah, just in case yeah, it's yeah. not and um, so i've just got a piece of card and then i have made myself a template of um a pterosaur body and we've got the pterosaur's wings and we've got its little feet there and then i just drew around it and i cut it out of the card so this is what i'm left with so actually what we here what we've got here are um, the pterosaur wings. Now, actually, if you think about a pterosaur, its wings really were just a flap of skin that went from its body up here to its fourth finger. And we tend to call this fourth finger our ring finger, but uh, for a pterosaur, that's their wing, wing finger. finger. Good to remember. Yep. So yeah, and then bats and bats have exactly the same that same flap of skin that goes from their finger to body. All right, so we've got the body. Yeah, uh, we need to give it a head. Right, so that's where the peg comes in. Peg. So I'm just going the to peg just just doop. peg on the peg, and suddenly, oh, yes, it's so so simple. Yeah. Right now, let's think about the head. Mm -hmm. So pterosaurs mainly ate fish. Yeah, and um, there was one amazing one called the pterodorstro. Ooh. Right, the pterodorstro had this like comb-like structure in its in its mouth in its okay. beak. So we reckon that it went down and dived into the ocean, picked up loads of water, came up. All the water would kind of come out the side, and you'd be left with a little fish, or more likely the plankton. Like a sieve. 
like a sieve. Oh, it's like a whale, actually. Like a so whale. So whale have yeah. the same sort of function, don't they? Um, some of them did mm. have teeth as well, okay. uh, probably to eat insects. Ah. So you can kind of make a choice, make a choice of your decoration. All right. Okay, so actually I have one. Here's one I've got, uh, I made earlier, I should say. Love mm. saying that. Well played. And look, so this is my uh, slightly more decorated peg pterosaur. So I have I've given it some teeth, just like you said. Some of them would have had. But I've also given this one a crest. Mm, I spotted that. Let me bring that picture mm. back up. Here you go. So actually, um, adult male pterosaurs had quite large crests and then young male adults may have had slightly smaller crests mm. so there we go so we've mentioned Mary Anning a few mm. times in yeah. this uh, this week and she actually discovered a pterosaur skeleton down on the south coast on the Jurassic mm. coast in the UK uh, it was the first full pterosaur skeleton found outside of Germany ah, cool yeah. she found some incredible things including not just pterosaur but plesiosaurs Ooh, I've got too. a picture of her plesiosaur here is her plesiosaur uh, complete mm. skeleton wow. that she discovered so let us make next little craft oh, okay. a pebble plesiosaur all right so i'm going to saw my uh, my pterosaur oh, down i love that pterosaur go. it's really cute it's good isn't it all there right you go. so got some pebbles from the garden now uh, a plesiosaur has this amazing kind of big round mm -hmm. body in the middle you could see that on the mary anning uh, skeleton of the plesiosaur nice. and that's so that it can kind of cut through the water really easy it's got a, a, it's got these flippers it's got these two kind of paddles at the side yeah. that push it through the water okay um and if you have a look at the those paddles actually it's something yeah really cool. we can if you see in this picture uh, take a closer look at the paddles all the fins you can see they're made up of lots of small bones and this is what tells us that a plesiosaur is a reptile and not a fish mm. Mm. so here is what we think a plesiosaur looked like oh, yeah amazing. it's a long-necked plesiosaur so uh -huh. i'm gonna, gonna recreate that so um oh camera bring a little, <laughs> a little camera so what, we've, all we've done is got some pebbles from the garden and then actually we've painted them and put a little decoration on them too so this is a really simple thing you could do at home make your own pebble plesiosaur maybe you, well, you get pebbles and turn them into any kind of dinosaur you can really. make a short necked pliosaur if you wanted to okay. but I'm going to go for this long neck like this but it's got that nice curve Yay. and douche Aww. there's his head cool and right turn it around so you can see it better thank on you camera. that is such a simple make here you go Love that. We are nearly at the end of this best of episode, but we can't go without answering the question of what happened to the dinosaurs? There are different theories, but most experts agree that the mass dino extinction involved an asteroid hitting the planet. So we made a model of an asteroid impact to help explain what might have happened. This was a great little activity and we were so pleased with how it turned out. We've just gone and made our own dino world and Greg is about to drop an asteroid on it so we can see what its impact might have been. Sorry, dinos! <laughs> but first, we have to fill the sea. Careful, Greg. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh no. That's okay, that's okay. It's great, it's great, it's great, it's great. Okay, okay. okay roll on the camera. Okay, roll on the all right cameras. then. Hang on. I am rolling on the GoPro, rolling on this oh, one. I've no, got some soil. Ready to drop it, ready to drop it. Oh no, I've got to do it accurately. Drop it. Oh! <laughs> yes! That was good! That was really good! Oh, I mean, for us, not good for the dinosaurs. All the cameras, it turns out. <laughs> yes. So. Okay, let's remove the asteroid. Wow. Hey, that's not bad! We got such a good crater ring created. Um, sadly, the uh, Parasaurolophus. Uh, para him uh, <laughs> is no more um, the others are okay but you can see how lots of mud lots of the ground or cocoa powder for us was kicked up in the sky went all over the trees all over the dinos all over the cameras. So we created a great crater, this mm -hmm. dip in the ground and it was half in water half on land. Uh, let me show you our crater there it is, right? Proud and this is exactly what scientists have found. It's a place called the Chicxulub Crater. Um, I'm going to show you where it is. So we've, we're zooming in on Mexico, uh, just below America. Zooming in, zooming in, and we're going to eventually get to a little, a little town called Chicxulub. Now that's basically in the middle of um, where we think this crater is. Zoom out, going to draw the crater on. Boom. Whoa. Okay, so how big is that crater? So it's actually wider Whoa. than two Londons. Wow. 
That is how well, big it is. The thing is, you can't actually see this crater. No, no, that's the thing. Yeah, Because this all happened 66 million years ago. So since then, layers and layers and layers of new sediment rock have fallen on top and have turned into sedimentary rock. Um, so that crater is actually hidden 12 miles deep under the newer rock. Mm. But scientists were still able to find it. It's incredible. They've, they've kind of worked out what it probably looked like. So here is a picture of it. How amazing wow. is that? You actually see it's got this double ring. That's because um, when it hit, yeah. uh, loads of stuff was kind of exploded up into the sky, right. fell back down again and caused this inner ring. Right. So it's like two rings of mountains. Yeah. Can we just take a second to compare their crater Right, <laughs> their artist recreation with ours. We yeah, did it. We did on. it. <laughs> Theirs, <laughs> ours. <laughs> Pretty similar, is all I'm saying. And with that, the asteroid impact brings not only the end of the dinosaurs, but also the end of this best of. Nice. Now, we hope you enjoyed our Dino Week highlights. Uh, if you want to catch up on any of the four episodes from the week, there are links to each of them in the video description box below. Thank you again to Pearson, who have kindly sponsored this video. If there are grown-ups watching, you might want to take a look at their learner resources. We've linked them in the description box below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do, and then click the little bell that's there as well. Then you'll get an email whenever we upload a new video. That is the best way to not miss any time we go live too. As always, stay curious. We will see you soon for a new live show or another best of. Bye. Bye.